Leading Change Adding Value is a framework for nursing, midwifery and care staff. These professions have a key leadership role in closing the three gaps identified within the five year forward view of health and wellbeing, care and quality and funding and efficiency. They can do this by identifying and addressing unwarranted variation, which is inequity in outcomes, experiences and care that can't be justified by reasons of where we live, demography or infrastructure. By addressing unwarranted variation, nursing, midwifery and care staff can deliver the triple aim measures of better outcomes, better experiences and better use of resources. The Atlas of Shared Learning will be a collection of over 200 case studies that will clearly demonstrate how nursing, midwifery and care staff have contributed to closing the three gaps, identified and addressed unwarranted variation and delivered the triple aim measures. It's really important to quantify the outcomes of our work to really demonstrate the impact that it's had. And today we're going to tell you a little bit more about the case study template that we use within the operational team because we recognise that actually this may be a new way of working for many people and it's our opportunity to demonstrate how anyone can lead on change, whatever their role and wherever they work. Um, we'd be delighted to hear from you about some of the work that you've been doing to implement leading change adding value and to embed it as business as usual in your workplace. So please do fill in the case study template and share your work with us. Everybody wants to make sure they give the best care they can and that they give the best quality care but it's when you begin to recognise that maybe some of the care that you're given isn't quite maybe as good as it could be because you know that somewhere else, maybe in the hospital, maybe somewhere else on the ward or a colleague or something you've read, makes you think about the fact that maybe actually the care that we give maybe it could be better and we know that that care isn't about the geography, it isn't about because of the population of that particular um, cohort of people or patient that, you, that you're looking after but it's actually just about thinking that actually maybe it's just what we are doing. So when you begin to think that perhaps the care that you're delivering maybe it could, um, could be better you need to actually make sure that you've actually got the evidence to show that actually what makes you think that in the first place and this is about actually being able to show first and foremost that when you're looking at unwanted variation, you're actually being able to evidence what it is that's causing a variation to happen and that variation is something that you don't want to happen and there isn't a good reason for it. So what you need to do is to make sure you're able to show us in your template that you've actually been able to demonstrate what that evidence was that made you think there was a need to actually address this unwanted variation in the first place. So since the launch of the framework, we're aware that lots of people have been leading on different examples of change where they've identified this unwarranted variation and they've thought about what needs to change. So it may be that they need to reduce the number of falls on a ward, for example, or we may need to think about in terms of community and the primary care sector, we might be thinking about um, have people made improvements on prevention and um, rates in obesity levels, for example. So what actually needs to be happening there? What needs to change? Can you convey to us and demonstrate what you've recognised needs to happen? And as a result of that, what are we able to take forward and what's your sort of approach, what's your method, what is it that you're going to be, to be doing or indeed have already done when you fill in the template. Your case study is actually about you demonstrating as a nurse, as a midwife, as a care worker, how you went about leading that change. Not someone else, but you as that nurse that midwife and that care worker. It's really important because that is what the framework's all about, it's about how you led an added value. We want you to be able to describe in the case study what it is you, you did differently and what were the actions that you took to make things change. Okay, so within the case study template, what we would really like you to be able to share with us is your results. What we're looking for here, if we think about your piece of work as a project, can we think about how you've made improvements around better outcomes, better experience and better use of resources? And have you got some data, quantifiable or qualitative data, that can tell us a little bit more about those results and the improvements that you've made? So just as an example, if you're able to share with us that you've made a reduction in falls, for example, across your ward, are you able to tell us that the numbers have improved from X to Y rather than necessarily there has been a reduction and we don't know much more about that.
when you're thinking about your outcomes, you're thinking about what's the difference that I made. One of the most important things you're going to be thinking about is the difference that you made to the patient, to the client, to the person that you're working with. You need to think about how can I collect that information? How can I know that the difference I'm making really does make a difference to that patient or, or client or carer? So what you need to think about is how am I going to capture that? How are you going to tell us about that? Because it's really important if you're thinking about the triple aims and about patient experience, thinking about what are the ways that what you've done to make a change is making a change to that patient's experience. So when you're writing your case study, think about 10 commitments. And if there are any of those commitments that actually you feel that you've applied to your case study, write them down. Think about what are the advice that you would like to give other people who might be thinking about doing something similar or you know, are, ex are actually reading your case study because it's really helpful for other people to be able to think about well, what were the challenges for you, what did you learn about from this, tell us about it and it will really help not only you reflect on your practice but it will help other people too. So we recognise that often this is quite an iterative process and that sometimes the work will be ongoing. Again, that's absolutely fine and completely understandable in this high-paced environment across health and care. So what we'd like you to do is just give us a little bit of insight in terms of where things are up to today and where things might be going forward. For example, you may have completed the case study with some really exciting outcomes based on a pilot study and you know that this is going to be rolled out further and it would be really great for us to come back and seek some more information further down the line. So just tell us a little bit about how things are moving along, where things are up to and maybe a little bit of a thought on where you think things are going from here. The case studies that you're putting together will form part of a really important uh, body of evidence that show and demonstrate the leading change adding value framework. So please when you're putting that case study together please uh, describe how you have identified and addressed unwarranted variation. In essence, what it is that you have done to lead change. There is a case study template available on our Leading Change Adding Value web pages or please contact the team via the email address below. Once we receive your case study, it will be reviewed by the Leading Change Adding Value operational team and quality assured to ensure that it aligns to the framework and we will be in touch with any queries that we may have.